hates the LGBT. So that grab a drink and a snack. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Hey, hello, I'm Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Feel free to hit the like button if you enjoy the video. You can hit the subscribe button if you like videos about cults, scams, multi-level marketing. Those are my usual videos. You can hit the bell button if you want to get notified when I post. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're back today. Like I said, it's a little different, not focused on MLMs, but focused on a cult. One of the reasons I'm doing this video is I have a bachelor's in cross-cultural studies with a minor in Christian education. I also have a master's in theology and ministry. Um, so I was a Christian for a while. I gave my life to it. I learned so much about it and I feel knowledgeable enough to have some good deep dives and conversations about it. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. So hopefully that might help you feel more comfortable as we go into this, knowing that I kind of know my shit, kind of spent a lot of money on it. Maybe I don't. Who knows? Let's see if it works. In my opinion, don't forget to comment below. You can give me more ideas of different cults you want me to do, even different religious groups like this one. Don't forget that you can comment below different ideas for me, whether it's an MLM, a cult, something else that you want me to see. It could be a religious group, so on and so forth. I would love to cover those that have not been covered as much, but if you have one in particular for me that has been covered a lot and you want me to cover it, feel free to comment it below. Also, I love when people leave their commentary as well. So leave your commentary about the video, what we're going over, what they're saying, what do you think about it? I do have to give a major trigger warning over multiple things, pretty much everything under the sun. Um, homophobia, fat phobia, child abuse, anti-Semitism, misogyny, religious trauma, if you got that like me. It's gonna be, might be a little difficult to have a video for you. While Greg Locke is on the cover of this thumbnail, he wouldn't consider himself part of the new IFB. He actually wouldn't say he's a part of any denomination or group. He's his own cult within a cult. In my opinion, Fundy Fridays, they said it like this, as a bastard of the new IFB, which I agree. He has a lot of beliefs that align, but he can't handle not being the top spot. And well, in the new IFB, that's taken by Steven Anderson. We're gonna talk a little bit about Steven Anderson. Um, he's definitely worse than you would think. And you might see some people that you've seen on the news before when it comes to religion and shitty things. So let's get started about the background of the new independent fundamental Baptist. It was started in 2005 by Steven Anderson in Arizona. His church is called Faithful Word Baptist Church. But the majority of the new IFB churches, which there's approximately 30, have come about in the last five years, especially as social media has boomed. Let's talk about what independent fundamental Baptists mean. I will be making a bracelet and we'll be doing the bisexual flag as I'm a bisexual and I really hate how homophobic they are. So let's piss them off a little more, shall we? Independent means they aren't a denomination technically, like they wouldn't consider themselves a denomination. They aren't considered a denomination, but like they kind of are. And they don't have conventions. So uh, for example, the SBC, right? Southern Baptist Convention. They don't have anything like that. They say, but like they kind of do. We'll talk about it later. Fundamental just means they have the fundamental ideology beliefs as Baptists in general. And Baptists, what they believe is the Trinity, salvation by faith, and verbal inerrancy of scripture, and so on. There's plenty of things. It's important to note that while they have the word Baptist in them, they're not affiliated with, ma with any mainstream Baptist denominations, and have gotten quite a bit of criticism from other Baptist denominations, and preachers, and, uh, you know, the Baptists don't like... <laughs> don't like them. <laughs> they just don't like the new IFB. And you know what? I get it. And I think you will not like them either after this video. If you do, then no, we cannot be friends. We just can't. There's no possible way. The new IFB churches present themselves as autonomous entities and do not consider new IFB to be an official denomination or designation, as I mentioned, but use a label to informally indicate their shared values and distinguish themselves from traditional or what they say, old IFB churches. I'll break that down for you in a little bit when we talk about their ideology. But they say that social media, and honestly, it really has, has helped them spread their horribly bigoted doctrine across the internet. Pastors like Steven Anderson boast of their ability to outsmart different social media platforms trying to quote unquote cancel them for their hate speech by constantly re-uploading content to new channels 
new profiles, I find it interesting that they brag about those things and brag about how people are trying to cancel them when I firmly believe, and maybe you've seen it as well, that you can't actually be canceled unless you allow yourself to be canceled. Frankly, I, I just don't think they're that smart and I don't think there's anything to brag about like at all for them. It's pretty awful. They are literally anti-Semitic, specifically anti-Zionist, if you want to get like super specific, but they follow God. Uh, yeah. Okay, Stephen. Very, I love Jesus, even though he's a Jew of you to do. While I don't believe they're making a giant impact, I do believe they're making some of an impact when it comes to new followers due to their focus on on the ground winning souls. Yeah, yeah. They're, they want to win souls for Christ. Very creative. Very new, Stephen. It's never been done before, has it? I am using glue for my bracelet and I know I haven't even gotten started on it, but Jesus really want to get this to stay. So we'll see what happens. They say they're focused on winning people for God, but that you're going straight to hell if you're Jewish or gay. Let's go into their ideology. This is where it gets a bit triggering. Uh, now, I just want to remind you of a trigger warnings from earlier. Go back and listen if you need to. It's pretty much all the things. So in this section, what I want to do is I'm going to break it down for you. I want to focus on old IFB, new IFB, and compare. Look at these little bitty little scissors. They're so freaking freaking tiny. Ready? A little clip, clip. Oh, fuck. These kind of suck. Clip, clip. Oh, Jesus Christ, they suck. Cute as hell, though. First off, let's cover independent fundamental Baptists as a whole, right? Not old, not new, just like what they all believe across the board. So they do prefer the King James Version of the Bible. They're pretty much only going to read from that. It's very rare that you hear them read from anything else. They focus on soul winning, as we mentioned earlier, right? Winning people for Jesus. And hard preaching, you know, that fiery pulpit preaching that they love to do. As well as traditional music, you're never going to see a motherfucking drum set on the stage ever. That's going to freak them out. Really just basically hymns. Think um, Methodist, right? Like if you've ever been to a Methodist church, just me. Grew up Methodist, went to a Baptist private school, all that stuff. Yeah, it's super weird. But only hymns with an organ. I grew up going to church where there was an organ. Quite an interesting time, to be honest. Also, they have clothing standards. They're extremely misogynistic. Uh, and not just on their clothing standards, but, you know, women have to wear long dresses. Yeah, that's that's it. Women have to wear long dresses and be covered up. Men... They have their shorts have to be down kind of to their knees. So that in of itself is just the IFB. But let's get into the old versus new. And this is where it gets very difficult to maybe watch. Uh, so if you need to click off now, you can. If you need to take a break and come back to it, you can. If you need to take a break throughout this entire <laughs> next part, I don't blame you. Let's get started. <laughs> Bitch, I'm filming. Oh, you're gonna let you go? No, because I have to tell you what I what I got. Can you guess? You look really pretty. I just <gasps> Okay, I'm back. My bestie called, so I got some of this bracelet down while I was talking to her. Bye flag. Okay. So back to it. The old IFB. They are pre-tribulation, so rapture will happen after God pours out his wrath, while the new IFB are post-tribulation. The rapture will happen before God pours out his wrath. The next one, and these were like the big four, I guess you could say. But there's more than this. There's more. <laughs> Separate families in the church service is the old IFB. And this is kind of the norm, though, where uh, families go to like nursery. So where babies go to the nursery, children go to child service or children's church or whatever you want to call it. Youth go to their youth group, stuff like that. Not new IFB. Everybody's together. The babies are in the service. Uh, so there's no separation, which, you know, okay, cool, I see. But, but with what's said in those services, which we're going to see a little bit of what's said, um, it's kind of terrifying for those kids and babies and toddlers and youth and teenagers. It's just mortifying that they're sitting there listening to it. The next one is that the old IFB tolerate LGBTQ plus while the new IFB uh, don't. Actually... How about I let Steven Anderson explain it to you? Trigger warning. The new IFB has zero tolerance for the LGBT and even hates 
the LGBT. So that this is a pretty this is a pretty stark difference. I mean, you, you're gonna have a hard time uh, convincing me or anyone else that the old IFB and the new IFB have the same position on homosexuality. It just isn't true. You know, there's a pretty stark difference here between these two things. Let's read some quotes from Stephen Anderson. November 2014, I actually discovered our cure for AIDS. It was right there in the Bible all along, and they're out spending billions of dollars in research and testing. It's curable right there. Because if you executed the homos like God recommends, you wouldn't have all this AIDS running rampant. Dylan, whatever his last name is, Shield of Faith Baptist Church, Boise, Idaho, September 2019. There's nothing more disgusting and wicked and vile than a homosexual. I cannot fathom anything more disgusting than being a sodomite. I would rather be strangled to death. I would rather be killed in the most brutal way than to become a homo. It's the most disgusting thing I could possibly think of. You know what I find more disgusting? Dylan, homophobics. You and your little buddies. Patrick Boyle from Friendship Baptist Church, Lakemore, Ohio, October 2020. When the world starts coming in with the homosexual movement, or they start coming in with all these filthy, wicked things, a lot of times people say, hey, what's the big deal? You know, let them use the word marriage. We don't care about that. Well, you think that as soon as they get the word marriage, you think that they're done? No. They're not done. That's just one worm who's eaten to his satisfaction, and then here comes the next worm, and here comes the next one, until you and I are no longer part of society. That's their goal. You know what, Patrick, you're right. The gay agenda really is to get all the straights gone. Hmm, interesting. I can't believe you figured it out. Grayson Fritz from All Scripture Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, January 2021, said, Bigot homophobe. I don't care what you want to call me. It's unnatural. It's filthy. It's wicked. Some kid walking in there with eyeliner on and makeup and he's taking all these hormones and he walks into a girl's locker room because I identify as a girl. They ought to take that little out and stone him. That's what they ought to do. We have Roger Jimenez, Psychopath Reprobates documentary from March 2018. They do have some documentaries. Maybe we should look into them and watch them together. We're not going to bring them in. Well, we should bring in the homosexuals and we should minister to them and we should love them. No, from such turn away. That's what the Bible says. Leave them alone. That's what Jesus said. We don't minister to them. There's no hope for them. They're worthy of death. Wow, that last part. I really, really forgot about that last part. By the way, Jesus never said that. Fun fact. Joe Major, Faith Baptist Church, Violet, Louisiana, September 2022. You know the homo agenda. They're not producers, they're recruiters. They recruit by defiling and molesting children, and then they take them, and they make them feel accepted into their lifestyle, and they brainwash that child into that lifestyle and into that, and make them feel accepted, and they try to recruit those children. That is evil, wicked, and sick, and these individuals can't sleep unless they do it. Have you ever thought that maybe the reason people are more LGBTQ these days and have come out more is because it's more widely accepted? People feel more comfortable to be honest about themselves and to other people? Bruce Mejia, Faithful Word Baptist Church, Los Angeles, El Monte, California, June 2019. Look, we're not the church that just says, well, we're going to preach against them. We don't agree with their lifestyle. No, we believe they should be put to death. They should die. And I will never grieve over a sodomite that is killed or that is put to death or any other way that they die. I will never grieve for that. In fact, I will rejoice over that. Donnie Romero, Steadfast Baptist Church, Fort Worth, Texas, December 2014. I'm not going to let any of these dirty faggots inside my church. These guys, they are all pedophiles. Look into the Bible. They're always trying to rape and hurt other people. They're relentless, they're relentless, they're predators, and given an opportunity to snatch one of your children, they would do it in a heartbeat. Jonathan Shelley, the Sodomite Deception documentary. January 21st, 2021. January 2021. One thing that's for certain is that those who are sodomites are evil, they're wicked, they're destroying our culture, they're destroying society. All they do is bring destruction to everything that they come in contact with, and we need to go back to the past where men of God used to preach against these filthy, disgusting freaks, against sodomites, against fags. 
Trigger warning, this next one is by far the worst. Jonathan Shelley, De Steadfast Baptist Church, Fort Worth, Texas, December 2020. There's nothing truly gay about them because gay means happy inside. They're so full of evil and wickedness and rottenness. They hate themselves. That's why so many f kill themselves. That's why so many of these shenanigans kill themselves. It's because they're even disgusted with themselves. You know what? I wish every f nanny would kill themselves right now. All of them. And if they don't kill themselves, you know what? Our government should take them out and stone them to death like they did in the 1600s and 1700s and the 1800s. If we're going to make America great again, I know where to start. Let's go to Hollywood and let's start putting some bugs to death. Those were filmed after the video was completed. The next one, which is the last one that we're going to talk about in this video, is the old IFB are Zionists. Essentially, they... They're pro-Jew. Jewish people are God's chosen people in the Bible, simply meaning that the land in the Middle East belongs to the nation of Israel. While Stephen and the new IFB is not. Hey, doggo, what you do, pepperoni? Come here, my little Ben. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just let him say it. Trigger warning. Anti-Semitism. Whereas the new IFB is actually uh, anti-Zionist and anti-Jewish, okay? So, you know, we're against the religion of Judaism. Um, we believe that it's an anti-Christ religion. If, if you deny the son, you don't have the father, you know, and it's anti-Christ. We're against the state of Israel. We're against uh, Judaism and um, just a totally different viewpoint here. And we believe in uh, what's known commonly as replacement theology or covenant theology. But basically, we do not believe that the Jews are God's chosen people. We believe that Christians are God's chosen people, that basically a spiritual nation made up of Christians has replaced the physical nation made up of uh, you know, the Israelites. Jesus was a Jew. So how can Judaism be anti-Christ? Christ himself was a Jew. So those are some videos we're going to get into more later. But I want to talk about some conferences they hold, which they do. They hold conferences. It's a thing. They just do it. They can say they don't, but, but they do. So new IFB pastors held an anti-Semitic, anti-Israel conference, a.k.a. Marching to Zion Conference in October of 2018. Here's a quote from them. Christians all over the world need to wake up and understand who God's elect are. There's nothing more frustrating than seeing a Christian drool over a Christ-rejecting, God-hating, Judaist pervert who calls himself a Jew. I will now be reading some very triggering quotes by pastors who were a part of this conference and pastors in general who are a part of the new IFB that have to do with Jews and anti-Semitism. Roger Jimenez, Verity Baptist Church, Sacramento, California, March 2019. The Synagogue of Satan. Of course, that's a reference to the anarchist religion of Judaism and the Jews today. But please understand, this Satan has sanctuaries. He has religious worship centers. And you need to understand this. You need to grasp this. Not all religions are good. In fact, most religions are wicked as hell. Literally, most religions are satanic. Mormonism is satanic. Catholicism, in case I'm not being clear. Catholicism is satanic. Islam is satanic. Jehovah's Witness, satanic. Bruce Mejia, Faithwood Baptist Church, Los Angeles, El Monte, California. November 2018. Those who love every religion are not learning the precepts of God. I'm talking about this attitude, this ecumenical kumbaya Christianity, where if someone names the name of Christ and they automatically and they're automatically in the club. No, we need to hate false religions. When a Jehovah's Witness or Mormon or any kind of false cults come to your house, you don't try to debate them. Don't say, oh, come in. Oh, man, I'm going to teach this guy a thing or two. I'm going to stump him with these verses. No, this is what you say. Depart from me, you work of iniquity. I pray you die and go to hell. Some of the featured pastors in this were Stephen Anderson, Pastor Boyle, Fritz, McMurdy, Mejia, Shelley, Thompson, David Berzines, and Joe Major. And 
Those are the last names of some of the big pastors in the IFB. Other new IFB-affiliated conferences include an annual Red Hot Preaching Conference featuring anti-LGBTQ and anti-Semitic seminars, a post-tribulation Bible prophecy conference in 2017 promoting deeply anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist views related to the new IFB belief in a post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture, and a 2018 new IFB soul-winning conference organized by Wittenberger that was attended by a dozen new IFB pastors. There are a few people I want to talk about in particular, and it's really just two, but there's obviously uh, quite a few. Uh, I mean, there's approximately 30 churches, so there's approximately 30 pieces of, I mean, bad people out there who believe this stuff. Excuse me, (laughs) almost slipped there. Let's talk about Jonathan Shelley. You might have seen Jonathan Shelley on the news, uh, because he was, (laughs) for, for being a piece of shit for saying some really bad things. So let's listen to a little bit of what Jonathan Shelley has to say about fat people. There's a certain group of people that you're not supposed to be around or be among. Those are wine bibbers and specifically riotous eaters of flesh. Now, what would be a riotous eater of flesh? This is someone that's essentially just overindulging in eating, okay? Now, you could overindulge in a couple ways. You could overindulge in a sense of, like, luxury, like, I don't know, really expensive foods or really high-end foods. But more likely, this is really just talking about uh, just overeating in general, not necessarily what type of food, but that you're just eating way too much food. Because notice its counterpart in verse 21 is the drunkard and the glutton. So obviously the drunkard is synonymous with the wine bibber in this particular passage and the riots of either flesh is consistent with the glutton okay and a glutton is just simply someone that overindulges okay basically going way beyond what's necessary or sufficient and, and basically just wanting to increase their level of satisfaction or pleasure by going above and beyond what's necessary that would be a glutton and gluttony it be kind of referenced in a lot of different contexts and a lot of different situations, but most people would associate that with being overweight. And what I find interesting is that the Bible is telling you, if you notice someone that is in one of these categories, you're kind of supposed to shun them, right? You're supposedly kind of shaming them and having nothing to do with this particular individual. But this concept, this idea is very attacked by modern liberal thinking and by this world's thinking. And, and the term that comes to mind for me associated with this verse is fat shaming, okay? Fat shaming. And that's the title of the sermon this morning is fat shaming, okay? Now, here's the thing. Does not the Bible clearly articulate that you're not supposed to be ama- around riotous eaters of flesh, okay? That's what it says. Now, here's the thing about fat shaming. And then before I, you know, kind of get started, keep your finger in Proverbs, we're coming back to Proverbs, but go to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11. One thing that happens when you overeat or you become very obese is that you become very sedentary. And in fact, that's what the proverb literally said. It said, drowsiness shall close. So you heard, you heard him right. His, uh, his sermon's called fat shaming and he's pro fat shaming. Uh, so apparently fat people deserve to be shunned and are going to hell. Well, see you there, Jonathan. What if we shame short people, short men, Jonathan? Huh? Does God say that? Just kidding, short kings, we love you, but we don't love Jonathan. The next part can be even, is even more sensitive than different things we've talked about. It's a little, uh, well, it's really fucking bad. It's about child abuse, and it is kind of hinting to the fact that people like Jonathan Shelley, Stephen Anderson, and other pastors in this arena of the new IFB, you know, I hate to say it, but in my opinion are kind of pro child abuse. And the reason I say that is simply because they've kind of said that themselves. Let's listen to some of the really bad things that they've said. I also want to remind you that as pastors, they are mandatory reporters. So when it comes to abuse or anything to that nature, they are mandated to report it no matter what. So let's hear a run-in that Stephen Anderson's had that he didn't report. 
frequently have seen their toddler playing in the park, and I'm just look, I'm looking up. Is there a parent here? Is there a sibling here? Is anybody here? It's just this tiny little kid playing in the park, and I'm I'm like kind of I'm in this dilemma. Like, what am I? What do I do? Do I? Do I take this kid back to their house? I don't want to, you know, I, I, that's not my place. I don't want to do that, you know? And what are they going to accuse me of then? You know, it's just like, I'm just saying, like, do I go all the way around and knock on their door and say, hey, you know what? Finally, I just thought to myself, well, you know what? This is just another day at the office for this kid. So, you know what? It's not my kid. It's not my problem. Because these kids are so unsupervised all the time. You know what? This one time isn't going to make a difference. And I just walked away. Sorry. You heard that right, folks. Uh, sorry about the bad recording. It's just not good sound. Baby's crying. He said that he was at the park and he saw a toddler walking around playing without a parent present. And he thought, should I help this thing? He called the toddler a thing. It's not a fucking alien. You have kids, Stephen. Or what would people think if I helped it? It. He called the toddler an it. Whatever. I'll get over that. Stephen, you are, and then he said at the end, it's not my problem. Actually, it is quite literally your problem as a mandatory reporter. It is against the law for you to not report those things. You know that, right, Stephen? But I honestly don't think he cares. Uh, he wanted, he asked himself, what would this look like? What would people say about me if I did that? Not anything bad for uh, helping a toddler who knows what happened to that toddler? You sure as hell don't, which you should. Because you're a mandatory reporter. Forbid. That's not the worst of it all, my friends. Let's hear some of the worst. This has to do with Steven Anderson and Jonathan Shelley. And I want to point out that I failed to mention earlier. Jonathan Shelley is uh, Steven Anderson, well, was his star student. They're very against getting an education at a school, like a Baptist private, like a Baptist school or any kind of religious school and schooling in general. They're, they're more pro homeschool, but specifically Jonathan Shelley was under Stephen Anderson before he started his own church. So um, they're very, I guess you can call it like minded. This is a little bit of a longer video, but I do think it's really important and you can see where I got it. I will mark their youtube channel down below withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod he shall not die thou shalt beat him i don't know how bad of a beating a one-year-old has to take that they uh, they're not able to walk straight or they're not able to develop walking correctly until later um but it it couldn't have been a beating that the kid deserved not at one what kind of man does that to his own child? I don't even know. Even another child, a one-year-old. I don't want your kids to go to hell. You gotta beat them. You gotta train them. You gotta chase them. You gotta scourge them. I want to pause it. Um, one, because I think we all need a break from what he just said. Um, two, <laughs> I want to remind you again about the trigger warning. Uh, it does not get better. So uh, let's continue. First, from my own testimony, I've seen Shelley slap his own kid in the face, full power at church, in front of everybody. Um, another time, I saw his kid fall down at a, outside of a restaurant, looked at his mom, and Shelley, you know, came to pick him up. And you saw the kid go from crying to freeze, like an animal scared that a predator was going was gonna to eat him. I know one of his boys came to church for, for a while with a broken limb. It's not a suggestion. I thought verse 14, thou shalt beat him. That's the same as all the other Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. The same one, thou shalt beat him. I just want to say that uh, thou shalt beat him is not a commandment. Thou shalt beat their child. That's not a commandment. Anyone else remember Jesus saying to beat their children? I think the fuck not. Trigger warning again as we go into more of it. But more than just my testimony, the uh, the contractor that did work on that guy's house told me that that, that guy, he was surprised that CPS wasn't going to come and take that guy's kids because he just beat them all just so badly. 
You know you could squash rebellion in the public school today? Take the rebellious one out and stone him. I bet they'd shaping up pretty quick. I, and we see, unfortunately, our society is cont continually destroying itself because of all of these rebellious, arrogant, prideful teenage jerks that just don't want to hearken to their parents. You know what? And God said they should be put to death. The guy that's the lazy gamer. I don't want to get a job. I just want to play video games all day and drink alcohol with my buddies. That guy should be put to death. Yeah. Care of it. And if you're a stubborn and rebellious child, you better be careful every single step you take. So that's Jonathan Shelley, and that's just a, a star student from Steven Anderson. I have a feeling that um, they're a lot alike. I have a feeling that maybe Steven believes the same as Jonathan does, considering... In my opinion, they are a cult, and therefore, what the leader believes, everyone else follows suit. We will be going back to the quote section, where they talk about women and the misogyny that they believe. Please know that this is a trigger warning, and it is quite difficult to listen to. We are close to the end of the video. I wanted to end with this, and a little something at the end. Stephen Anderson, Faithful Word of Baptist Church, Tempe, Arizona, February 2013. Today we have women's rights. What do you think they mean when they say women's rights? The right to rebel and disobey their husband. The right to divorce him. The right to go out and get a job and make your own money. The right to tell him what to do. The right to go vote for our leaders, as if women should have any say in how our country is run. Jonathan Shelley, Steadfast Baptist Church, Fort Worth, Texas, March 2021. Unfortunately, our society and really the world as a whole has really evolved and changed quite a bit to the point where women are in high ranking positions of authority in our nation and around the world. And what you have to understand is this is not a blessing. A lot of people, you know, I've heard from Christians, I've heard from all kinds of people, they're just so excited that now we have a woman as a vice president of the United States. They're so excited we have Kamala Harris and have these other women who are just in charge and leading and it's such a good example unto women. But really nothing could be further from the truth. And in fact, women in these positions of leadership and authority are actually a curse upon our nation and they're a curse upon our nation. <sighs> All of that to say, let's tax the fucking church, maybe? I don't know. Uh, actually, yeah, I do know. Tax the church, please. It's getting a bit ridiculous. The new IFB is a group of malicious men who have a God complex issue. It's giving Calvinism meets should be in jail meets Jim Jones. I don't know. It's giving me a little mix of all of that, plus some. They are a group of dangerous people, in my opinion, with dangerous doctrine. After research and knowledge that I've gotten, again, in my opinion, they are not just a religious group who agree on something. They are a cult. After that very difficult video to get through, in my opinion, it was pretty difficult to research and figure out. Uh, I just have a few things to say. Um, tax the fucking church. Hug your child. It's actually worse than what I put on this video. It, it's worse, especially when it comes to LGBTQ and Jews. So I've left out some. And go do something that'll help you cleanse from this video. Because I'm going to. Thank you all for watching. I really hope you have the most amazing morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Wherever you are in the world and whenever you're watching this, get some rest. I'll see you next time.